I think we should try something different. Really? Yeah, let's try something new. Okay, this I mean, we just read Shell Sales. So, <coughs> follow me. When I first started, <laughs> that was Jamie Ryan. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, let's try something new. Right, okay, follow me. Follow me. When I first saw you, right. Scott. But Scott with three T's. 
<laughs> so, uh, so when I say yeah, I need everybody to say Scott. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. Scott. Sweet. Now that we've tricked you to sitting in the back of the end of the person in front of you, uh, we're all excited to start the show. So we're here to do some poetry. Scott, you, you know, I love poetry. Poetry is something I love. What about you? What do you love? I love, uh, I like to eat. I like to eat a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but sometimes I, I, eat, I eat this one food that it gets me into a little bit of, uh, it gets me into a little bit of trouble. Um, so before I do this poem, I'm going to need some help. When I say, mm -hmm, can everybody say, good? Mm -hmm. Did you see them see what I do for just one leg? Still salivating salaciously from those men's varieties and wings. So I went on taking and I became stricken on the most finger licking. I was addicted to chicken. At first, Boston Market would spark it from a big sachet cash Chick fil A as Popeyes would satisfy my late night crimes for poor shame. At 10, it was Kenny Rogers roasters that were passing on me then. While some feared clogging or a heart attack by 30, I fought with chicken inside. How could my arteries possibly be dirty? That sumptuous, scrumptious, delicious, suspicious, golden brown beast, I'd eat even faster. If I had two mouths and four hands, I'd play all day with drumsticks like I was stuck in middle school marching bands. <laughs> or something like the Herpy Parmesan. <laughs> Sesame Alfredo with chicken with wonton. Oh yeah. But fast food wasn't enough. These hunger pains were rough. KFC meant to me that I kung fu chicken. The only good chicken was a kick chicken. The only good chicken was hooked and cooked and in my gut. Tossed and sauced and straight out my butt. I was too chicken to know I had a problem. So I told no one and kept on gobbling. I started reading chicken soup for the chicken soul, but soon it became too much me and I started to lose hold. I dreamt always of that golden rat beast that would be my next beast. Because I started sweating grease, my nightmares became day scared. And they would never cease. I could tell which chickens would taste good, and which were ringers. I looked at my hands. I had chicken fingers. I couldn't tell what was fat or what was fiction. Everyone I pointed at, Turned into a chicken. <laughs> my dreams are getting worse, my sense of smell. We, we looked in the mirror. We even had beaks. I grew shanks and shoulders and wanted to go home. Tried brushing my hair. I had a chicken comb. I couldn't stop feather plucking or tether ball plucking. Kept on rocking this. I started winging like anger. I could have been a chicken contender. But. 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 For those of you that don't know, salmonella is a disease you can always get from not properly cooking chicken, so always bake it 450 degrees. <laughs> okay, how many of you love chicken? <laughs> she pulled out a huge piece of chicken from her... Where did, you, where did that come from? Like her arm pit? <laughs> How many people have eaten so much chicken you thought you might become a chicken? Okay, I agree. 
hands down. Um, Scott loves food. I love music. Is anyone here love music? Okay, sweet. I love all kinds of music. I love classical music. I love jazz. I love spiritual. I love uh, reggaeton. I love folk. I love country. I love hip hop. Anybody in here like hip hop? Okay. So, because my name is MC, it's really easy for me to love hip hop. And because of that, I'm not really a poet. Uh, I'm more of an MC. Uh, but actually, in order for me to explain this, I'm going to need two volunteers who are quiet, with their hands raised amazingly high. May I have this young lady here? Yes, pointing to your chest. Both of you, come, why not? Come, ladies and gentlemen, give a huge round of applause. Come along the side, come along this way. Give a huge round of applause for your two years playing the poets. Sweet, sweet. Keep giving them a round of applause. <laughs> they are shaking and signing autographs. All right, chose two celebrities. This is amazing. Sweet. Now, before you can understand my profession, I'm going to give you all a quick history lesson. Pull out your mental notebooks, find a pen or pencil. What is hip hop? Here are the fundamentals. Now, people think they know that they've got it all wrong. What the media has twisted, I shall fix with this song. Real hip hop consists of four parts. One entity with the beating of four hearts. The first heart is DJing, sampling, scratching, cross fading, turntable, mixing and matching. The next is graffiti, the spray can art, where people tag their names across the walls in the park. The next art is break dancing, where people voice it all sorts of crazy hand stances. She said no to me with her eyes. Okay. And the last heart stands right before your EYE. Ask yourself, and I'll tell you one more time, that I'm not a poet. I am an M. Word. So here's how we want to do this. When I point to this beautiful young lady, she will say loudly into the microphone the better M. Yes, one. M. Yes, come closer, come closer. Yes, and when I point to this beautiful young lady, she will say loudly into the microphone the letter C. C. Here we go. M. C. I didn't point to you, where are you going?
This is a one-word poem. Each of us will say just one word, like humongous, vibrating daffodils, concrete, rough elbows. Here's a sentence. Here's another sentence. Some worms live in apples. Semicolon. We live in the big apple. Sponge Bob lives in a pineapple under the Here's a question. If a woodchuck could chuck, would cheese? Would a woodchuck be a cheese chuck? Or would a woodchuck work at Chuck E. Cheeses? <laughs> this is a one word poem. Here's our impression of classical music. Here's our impression of a kitty cat singing classical music. This is the end of our one word poem. Please clap now. Hi. Hello! What up, yo? My name is Light, and I'm bright and gifted, and I wouldn't stop shining if what? If you put me in the deepest, darkest part of the Pacific. Yo, my name is Oprah. I got more dough than bakeries, more dough than Bambi, more dough than Homer Simpson when he's angry. The Simpsons, my name is Kylie Bad Butterfly Moon. I take that as you sit down with every boy band on iTunes and a shirtless little pump picks all over my room. You're such Whoa. a Whoa! My name is Guy with Mad Hairy Chess. Yo, I undo one button, I'll pop some bird's nest. Rougher than Brillo till I comb it out and use it as a chin pillow. Yo, yo. My, my name, name is number two. You know, like the pencil that you use to free mentals and have cats in the cipher like. My name is John Smith, Bob Costas, Betty Crocker, Dave Thomas, Reverend Dr. Eli Whitney, Brittany Shakespeare the Third. But you can call me Wiggles. Hey, Wiggles. My, My name is Caucasian male in his mid to late twenties. <laughs> but you can call me stereotyped, full fashion. I'm so white. How white are you? I make the Pillsbury Doughboy look like Samuel L. Jackson. 
Yeah, well, my name is uh, Bottle of Water, but you can call me just as dirty as what's on tap. Same crap, different package. Did you know that the avian is the word naive spelled backwards? Uh, my name is not really that important, but you can call me Name Brand. My name is gonna give you cancer, but you can call me GMOs, pesticides, and fake tans. My name is Puppy, but my aunties call me a top. My name is College Tuition, but you can call me on the affordable. Yeah. My name is Planet Earth, man. I'm flying fast. fast. My name is each day your life spans. I'm flying fast. fast. And my name is Rhyming Fast, and I'm the super the rhythm of the who be sitting with that type of machine that on the top of the schedule. So check. I'm respect that cool, calm, collected. Pay attention. My name is Expression. Call me music, movement, release stress with no second, no confusion. So we know what to do with precious moments. Preserve. I'm the power of the actions and the movement of the words. Word. Word. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So uh, we are the main poets as a group, but I think it's important that we introduce ourselves individually. Uh, some of you may know the names already, but for those who don't, my actual name is Mick Kumari, uh, but usually when I tell people my name is Mick Kumari, they look as confused as this gentleman right here. Uh, so instead of Mick Kumari, I tell people to call me by my stage name. Uh, my granny says it's my rap name. All right, granny, that's cool. Uh, that's MC, so can I hear everybody front to the back say, what up, MC? So my actual name is Scott, but, uh, but I got a rap name, it's Scott, but Scott with three T's, right? So, uh, so when I say yeah, I'm going to say yeah, and everybody can say Scott. Yeah. Scott! Yeah. Scott! All right, they, I guess they're with me. Nice. 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 Uh, so, so we're going to try, we're going to try something right here. Uh, how many people were uh, were here last year when we performed? By, by a round of applause, by a round of applause. Great, great to see you back. Um, um, so I did a poem last time about all the things I'm, I'm scared of, right? I don't know if anybody remembers. I'm scared of kickboxers, I'm scared of vampires, I'm scared of spiders, I'm scared of other people that are scared of spiders. And it was a lot about uh, all the anxiety in life that I, that I go through. Uh, so uh, as poets, though, we like to kind of write you know, new works all throughout the, uh, the, course, the courses of the year. And uh, I wanted to kind of share, share this one of kind of where I'm at. Um, it's also kind of about my parents. Uh, my parents were both teachers for their entire careers. Give it up for uh, the teachers for just a second. Right? My, uh, my dad was a gym teacher. He used to wear the sweatpants up his neck. Right? My mom, she taught people from other countries how to learn English. And she herself uh, knew three languages, English, Spanish, ancient Egyptian language, go clean your room, you know, an, an important, an important fun language. In any event, I go through life with a lot of anxiety, but there's one place where I don't, and uh, that's what I'm driving. Like, I feel, I don't have any degree of road rage, I'm more of like a road sage for some reason. I realize, like, all right, you, you, you cut me off at a, at a busy exercise, that intersection, you know, I, I let it slide. Maybe, maybe you're, you know, trying to, trying to visit a, a relative in the hospital or you got uh, Hamilton tickets or, or something like that. So, uh, so this poem right here, this uh, goes out to my pops, and it's where I'm kind of at right now. And uh, take this ride with me. And it was, my dad's always been quite tentative behind the wheel. What some might call a nervous driver. Parks inside the lines, follows the signs. He's the type of guy who drives 52 in a 65. Even with his responsibly slow style, somehow he's ended up in more accidents than a room full of third childs. Now, when I was in college, I wasn't the most responsible automobile either. I don't even get tickets for alternate side parking, street cleaning, and expired meals. I've had my car towed three times. Okay, five times. One of which I no doubt deserve, but it was taken from my own driveway in college, inching out onto the curb. I've also gotten several speeding tickets, not by being reckless but absent mind when being stuck in a daydream on some downward decline. I once hydroplaned into an elderly Asian woman's Nissan Sentra, all rehearsing a poem about my late mother. Late, a weird word to describe a woman who was always so punctual, but she lost when her exhaust pipes became non-functional. So she wasn't showing up to the scene of this crime, not today, not tomorrow, anytime. Luckily, the Asian woman was perfectly fine. I also flipped the car 
car with a U-Haul one moving day tearing its bumper straight off the sign. So needless to say, I've had a fair share of automotive melee, and no lie, but knocked on Pinocchio's nose, nobody's been hurt or got to die. So before my next checkpoint's arrival, I've tried to become a far more responsible driver. But this home has nothing to do with driving, although it's pretty much driving me mad, and has very little to do with cars, and mostly to do with dad. Because recently I found out that Pops has Parkinson's. Excuse me, not Parkinson's as in traffic infractions from unpaid actions and too many tickets from a cop who's mean, but the disease of the central nervous system from a drop in dopamine. Which means, sometimes his body hits the brakes as he locks up in a cut or anti-freezes in the street. In other swervy words, we all move smoother when the correct chemicals reach our brain sooner. But what happens when there's far less premium, regular, or super? Your car stalls and shakes some and you lose balance. A routine trip around the block becomes a daunting physical challenge. And that's pretty much Parkinson's. As every new day begins, he absolutely must take his vehicle out for a spin. All right, maybe I should take the windows a bit on this one, but I have to see and speak this through. Especially before peeking out all this from the it's too late rear view. Meanwhile, my brother's denials and denials away, me cooped up inside with a license to hide, clutching his own never learner's permit from some odd point of pride. So it's just my stepmom and I trying to keep dad's lights on as much as we're able, realizing right now he needs to be his own pair of jumper games. By the way, my connection to Pops will never stop, even if we loosen our family ties like Michael J. Fox. So before it kicks itself into high gear, what will I do when I can't go back to the future and he's no longer here? So please let my hoverboard float like a butterfly because this disease can sting like a bee. Left hooking his way away from Cassius Clay, moving toward Muhammad Ali, which is knocking out his cognitive function as his batteries drain and fine motor skills suffer and oil begs for a change. So I just need to remember what we need to remember, and not just his poem. Wondering when or if I'll ever have children of my own, so as at the same time reminded of rocking back and forth on his knee, I can also see the parent I aspire to be. Drained with his spark as he strains to switch gears into park. Out of park, into and out of Parkinson's is not a death sentence, at least it doesn't happen. But as he currently sits statically, retire pressure dropping rapidly, a motionless ex phys ed teacher is certainly sad to see. I could ask for 10 more good years, but truth is, I want infinity. So how about I share with you some sort of pre eulogy to this poem, your love, this story is will keep refueling me. His easygoing attitude and genuine sweetness, the 30 years he spent teaching and coaching genius, his patience, understanding, and effortlessness in being kind-hearted and decent, his love of baseball cards, spaghetti westerns, and Liam Neeson's, before that stuff went down. The story of a man who found two soulmates, has two kids, loves desserts, burgers, and is missing most of his home. The story he's told 500 times that I give my left ear to hear a few times ago. The story where he beats me in basketball, picks me up from soccer practice, saves me from drowning in a pool, shows up for me time and time again. The story of his father's bronze star, his gigantic brother Tom in his very first car, a red Chevy Nova that always seemed like it could run forever. Thank you. So, that was an amazing poem from a man, Scott, about Pops. Uh, I was on a, a big show in New York City. Uh, show sold out, lots of people thought it was uh, very cool. I felt larger than life, like a rock star. Uh, I live in New Jersey, so after the show, I took the train from New York to New Jersey. Uh, when I got to the train station in New Jersey, there were a lot of homeless people at the train station. And uh, as I walked out of the back of the train station, I discovered that one of the homeless people at the train station was my mother. Now this is a true story. Uh, I haven't seen my mom in almost five plus years. Uh, my mom, my entire life, has dealt with like, mental health issues. And as much fun as I have traveling the world and doing with poetry, I decided that I needed to write like, a really serious poem about my mom. Uh, and so that's what I did after I discovered my mom that I, I took her to the hospital and got her help. But I needed to write this poem, so this is uh, for the most beautiful woman in my life.
I remember a time they called you sunshine. Fierce little red bone firecracker, New Redeemer Baptist Dorothy Dandridge with a down south circuit of sequin in your summer solstice smile. Sunshine, the center of my universe, sometimes I'm afraid to get close to you, not interested in reliving Icarus, so I love you from distances that only the opportunities for photosynthesis, and though I know we've had our share of differences, I still will not let anyone paint you as the portrait of poor choices, for how many of them have studied sunshine with the naked eye, stripped of judgment, pupils to your solar eclipse, need they be reminded that even when darkness persists, Still, sunshine exists, sparkling beyond postpartum depression. Never let a paranoid schizophrenic spring dim your jubilee. Drugs couldn't crack you. Perseverance on the tip of the tongue of your yellow dancing shoes. Possible is a roller coaster hand you bar, and together you and I threshold sober, unyielding underneath ultraviolet, melanomatic memories, the indelible scent of suffocated plastic forever singed in my sinews. Marmaduke in my melanin, marriage of warrior and wisdom. This mahogany skin is a celebration that sunshine knows best. Sunshine, you told me to love life, how light lingers liable looking for loss. Sunshine, you told me to love God, but question religion. For some reason, you still raised me to be a Christian. I guess you knew I would never think a story fiction where a son sacrifices his life for who his father loved. Sunshine's got me believing in miracles like some series of sun-soaked syllables could quiet the cumulo nimbus, the violent voices clouding your invisible, that my tongue could take the rains, and in the soft water silence, you would only hear one voice, clearly. Mine saying, I love you without knowing how. One voice saying, after all this time, I forgive you. One voice begging you to forgive me for standing with my back to the sun, complaining about it. When I should have been your orange light, reflecting all of that on lucidity lost, one day I pray you get to see your sun shine. So as you, uh, you go through your, your time here, um, you know, sit, sit with the sunshine and, and let the sunshine represent, uh, you know, your family, whatever it is, your friends. I, I guess I've had the privilege of, uh, of, of performing with this guy next to me for about uh, 12, 12, 12 years. Uh, and we spend a lot of time away from our family, but it's great to have great friends that you're able to work with and that you're able to perform for, uh, perform next to. Uh, and it's definitely an, an honor. I really love that. So give it up for, for friends that you, have, that you have yet to make and that you're going to make. The one thing that we love about this poetry is that this poetry uh, is for everyone, and through this poetry we've had an opportunity to meet a lot of people and to uh, gain friendships that we probably wouldn't have made if we were in our, you know, the areas that we grew up in. Uh, and we've been able to share this poetry with a little bit of everyone and had a little bit of everyone share this with us. So uh, this poem is for everyone. This is for, uh, it doesn't matter if you're black, White, brown, brown, race. Trap, trap, trap. Horse, horse, horse. Arms, 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 race. Asian, calm. Egyptian, camel. Jamaican, bullshit. Race. Hola, me amo mi comadre. So I'm hanging out, boy. Race. Oi, I got to show this up again. I think it's like I'm feeling the plant. I'm Jewish. Race. Hello. Hola, ni hao. Konnichiwa. Good night. Salama alaikum. Race, shalom, yenaba, boom tag, ujamo wanizima, sujamo wanabibima, bibima wana. Race, dreads, feathers, yamakas, says ten, babushkas. Race, who's the fastest? Doesn't matter, slow and steady wins the race. Who's the smartest? Who's the artist? Who's the darkest? Who will win this race? She looks funny. They sound strange. They smell weird. Race, poverty, war, hate, disease. We need to eat. Race, create, love, take, care, make, hope, make, cheesecake. Sure. Keep the pace. Different cultures. Delicious foods to taste. Don't run away from who. Then you from, from who we, we are. are. Stay together in this human race.
another is that we open each session with the ring of the gum. Many of you might know Fernanda. I realize she's been coming here for about as long as the two of you have known each other. Okay. So this is Fernanda's 11th summer, which makes her one of the two students who's been here the longest of every student here this summer. So she's going to open up the session by ringing the gum. But first, we have a final live performance. If you are a dreamer, if you are a dreamer, wish you a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, it by my fire. for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come, come in. in.